Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Today I'm going to be taking you down to my local beach about a mile and a half away but before that I need to get my camera set up so I thought I'd do it here because it's blowing a gale outside. Now the reason I need to get my camera all set up is because I've been set a challenge by a friend on a Facebook group where I hang out called Utogs. My friend is from Northern Norway and he's a very good photographer by the way, uh, Willie Nielsen. Willie was chatting online about the days of film, as you tend to do when you're as long in the tooth as I am, uh, and you started way back. Uh, my first camera was in 1980, uh, a Rolleiflex 35mm film camera, and I had one 50mm f1.8 lens. Back as a, an impoverished teenager, that was all I could afford. But it's fair to say that modern digital photography opens up photography to people who otherwise couldn't afford to get into it because it cost you a lot of money to get to the point where you were producing good results. Uh, and if you didn't have darkroom facilities, it was an expensive proposition when you were getting 24 exposures processed at your local boots or sending them off to bonus print or whatever. So I'm gonna set my camera up as if it was a film camera uh, and head down to the beach and see how well I get on without all the modern aids that I take for granted. Now, before we talk about the camera settings, uh, I've decided I'm not gonna use my 12 to 100 millimeter lens because it gives me far more flexibility than I used to have back in the early 80s. What I'm gonna do is use my 17 millimeter f1.8. So it is a bit wide angle, certainly wider than I used to have, uh, but it does mean that I'm stuck with that single focal length. So as far as the settings go, um, not too difficult to set it up. So the first thing is, this is the last time I'll be using the screen on the back of the camera because of course I didn't have one of those in the past. So I'll be saving these settings onto one of the custom options on my control dial, uh, switching the screen off and that'll be the last time I see it. So uh, manual focus only because uh, I don't think I had autofocus back in the day. I'm going to use an ISO of 200, but I won't be able to change that, of course. Uh, I'm shooting JPEG, as you'd expect. With the JPEG settings, I've chosen the muted because I would be able to select the sort of film stock that I'd want to use. So by using muted, it's going to give me the sort of effect that I would normally try and go for if I'm post-processing a RAW file. On that subject, I am also gonna do raw captures as well, so that if there is anything interesting, I haven't wasted it and I can work with it, but I'll be showing you the JPEGs straight off the card when we get back. Uh, I'm white balance, I'm gonna leave it at cloudy. It's sunny at the moment, but the clouds are moving through. Uh, and of course, I can't change that because you couldn't do anything with white balance back in the day, so I'll stick with cloudy for this. Now, obviously, I won't be using things like the histogram, levels, and all that sort of thing. Okay, so I think that's everything sorted out. Let's head off down to the beach now, into the howling gale. It's a high spring tide, which I've chosen specifically because those are my favorite conditions to shoot in. Well now, first of all, let me apologise. I've brought you to the church in the sea yet again. It's my local beach. It's still locked down. Sorry about that. But I'd hope that by doing something slightly different today, it would make it slightly less tedious. There are a couple of things that I'd forgotten to mention when we were up at the house that are important. Oh, I'm getting wet. 
<laughs> that are important to this particular uh, challenge. First off, I've set the aspect ratio at three by two. Now, of course, with film, you can't change that and I can't crop in post. So I've got to be really careful about my compositions. Secondly, no image review. I've switched that off. So once I've fired the shutter, that's it. Uh, I won't know what I've got until we get home, we take a look. And one last thing I'd forgotten to mention is that I will be using filters. Now, of course, during my day shooting with a film camera, filters were essential. So with this shot, which of course is the Church of the Sea with the stones leading you up at high tide, although I've missed it slightly, it's dropping off a bit too low for my liking already, but I'm using a polarizing filter got a, a three-stop soft grad on because obviously I can't do anything about highlights and shadows in post. I'm also going to try a shot with either a 10-stop or even a 10 and a 6-stop combined because I would like to try and my hand at long exposure photography when I can't see what I'm doing. Oh yes, and there's one last thing I'd forgotten to mention. Uh, I'm going to be using my remote shutter because back in the day I had a cable release uh, but of course I've switched off any two second timer so you don't have that luxury so all of my images will be taken with a remote shutter well now I'm having to zoom with my feet I've had to follow the tide down I haven't fired the shutter yet right now I've got a newly formatted SD card and I intend to show you the up to 24 exposures when we get back. Haven't fired the shutter yet. Uh, I'm following it down. The composition is getting worse as time goes by. It's taken me so long to get set up and organized talking to you in this wind that I've missed the shot completely, unfortunately. Not to worry. I'm determined to take a long exposure and use these waves as they roll in to the right-hand side of the, of the boulders that lead you out to the church. In some respects, getting closer to the church isn't necessarily a bad thing because I hate images where the church is in the far distance of some sort of afterthought. Anyway, I really need to get on with this, so by the next time we have a chat, I should have fired off a few uh, images. And one thing I'm not being at all precious about is my aperture. I'm quite happy to use aperture to give me depth of field because I can't focus stack, of course, but also um, I'm going to use it so that I can close it right down, which will help me with my long exposure. So pretty much everything you know about digital landscape photography is going to go out the window here. I'll probably still make a complete overlook of it, though. Well, this is turning out to be quite challenging. My feet are soaking because I hadn't worn my wellies, didn't expect to be doing any wading. Also, this wind is causing me real problems. Uh, it's absolutely savage. Anyway, um, I've shot seven exposures so far, done with the church, a couple at uh, fast shutter speeds, but also I did go for the long exposure, but just with a 10 stop. Now, I started out at around about eight seconds, which is what I figured I would get if I was shooting under normal conditions. And then I thought, hmm, that might well be horribly overexposed. I've probably been a bit ambitious. So I dialed it down. I think I took one about two seconds as a bit of a banker. But then it occurred to me, oh no, I've done four or five exposures, but I'd forgotten. I dialed my uh, aperture right down to F22. Well, with nothing really to show me what's going on, I'm flying blind. So I've also shot one exposure at 60 seconds. We'll find out when we get back whether that's pure white, whether the ones at eight seconds are pure black, or whether I've got it completely wrong and I should have shot one at 30 seconds. But by then, the tide has gone out. Um, I've really got nothing to work with. So we'll see what we've managed. In the scheme of things, if I've got one or two usable images from those seven exposures, that will be a real result.
Okay, seven exposures down, 17 to go in my virtual roll of 24. Um, I've come around to the far side of the beach. As you can see, the light has completely gone. It's clouded over, it's started raining. So in addition to the sea spray on my lens, I'm also having to contend with the rain. But I found a composition that if I can time it just right, and that's gonna be key, because with this sort of thing, with a digital setup, you'd think nothing of firing off 100 frames to get that one where the wave is just breaking over the rock and the rivulets are running down. I'm gonna to have to time it just right, and I'm certainly gonna go through my film really quickly if I'm not careful. But I've got a finger of rock in front of me. I've got the church in the background in the same frame. So hopefully it would work out. And under normal circumstances, I would certainly come back and have another go at this. Oh, well, that was all a bit warts and all. <laughs> Absolutely tiffing down now. It, it was a terrible mistake trying to uh, capture some fast action on that basis. I think I ended up uh, with a total of 22 exposures. I may well have lost count towards the end. Um, it's now absolutely tipping down. Of course, back in the day, my film camera most certainly wasn't weather sealed. Uh, luckily, my EM1 is, so I stayed out for a little while. Uh, but my video camera is definitely not weather sealed. So uh, let's see if we've got anything. Right, back at the house, slightly dried off. Nice hot coffee. And the camera is still soaking. So we'll take the SD card out. Now, I promise on my honour that I haven't looked at the contents of this card. All right, there's the contents of the card. You can see the raw file, so I'm just going to grab the JPEGs, stick them on my desktop. Well, now, some of them at first glance <laughs> clearly are unusable, um, and some of them are just downright disappointing. But let's go through them one at a time. And as you can see, I actually only fired the shutter 18 times, so I lost count towards the end. Uh, of course, with a film, you'd have the little indicator window that would tell you where you were. And if you were lucky, you could grab an extra one or sometimes even two exposures from a film. So let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing I'd say about this is it's too dark. Uh, the shadows here in this area are just not working at all. Um, also, I can see straight away the horizon's off. And that's something that it hadn't occurred to me. I'm so pedantic about horizons. So this really doesn't cut it for me, I'm afraid. It's horrible. I don't like it at all. Uh, this next one. Oh, now that's better, but oh my goodness, those colours are awful. That seaweed has got so much yellow in it. Uh, the problem is, of course, I had my white balance set to cloudy, so that won't help at all. I would cool that down immensely in post. So, yeah, not happy with that at all. So then we get into that. Yeah, OK, that didn't work. What was that? A sixth of a second <laughs> F22 with a 10-stop filter. That was never going to work, was it? What a waste of a frame that was. Uh, yeah, something just starting to happen there and we're at eight seconds, so I was right. That was far too dark. Uh, two seconds. And what have we got there? 60 seconds. Now, actually, that's not too bad. Um, I've got the stones slightly more isolated. There's a bit of seawater around them. Uh, the church isn't in too bad focus. Um, I'm quite liking the horizon. Uh, you can see, though, I've got all sorts of, uh, of speckles in the sky because there was so much spray about in that wind. So really nothing usable there, I'm afraid. I don't think I'd be able to salvage that, which is a great pity because considering I was shooting blind, F22, 61 seconds... It's got potential, but um, I was cleaning my filters between every shot, so those uh, speckles of sea spray hit the filter during the 60 seconds of the exposure. So over at this far rock, and you can see again my horizon's off, but you can see the rock that I was working with. And every so often, there's a bit of spray there. It's all overexposed, though. The background and the church is is horribly overexposed. I'd, uh, yeah, I wouldn't use that at all. 
a little bit more movement there, but most of the time you see I was missing it. The wave would hit uh, and I just couldn't get the timing right. I see normally I'd fire off a high burst, uh, something like 10, 15 frames a second. Uh, use Pro Capture as well on the EM1, which is capturing frames in advance of you hitting the shutter button. So, uh, yeah, this oh, was a bit of spray there running over the rock. I almost caught that one. No, I don't think it's going to get any better at all. Oh, now there's spray coming over on that one. I probably would have made something of that as a raw file because I could straighten up the horizon. I can darken down. You can see from the histogram uh, up in the top corner there, I certainly haven't overexposed it. And in fact, the histogram is spot on for a micro four thirds sensor. The problem was that the spray, uh, the waves were hitting that rock and really piling up into the air and it would have been it would have been quite a good little composition with the church in the frame as well. So, what have we learned? Well, not a lot really, to be honest. Um, I suppose I'd liken it to uh, back in the day when cars were first invented, that people used to go to get from A to B by horse. And then cars were invented and people just used horses for recreational purposes, for a bit of interest, a bit of a change. Uh, and they still do to this day. So maybe in a hundred or so years time, people will still be using film if they can get hold of any film. But I prefer digital. I prefer the fact that I can work with it when I get back to the office and sit here with a nice hot coffee while the wind is howling against the uh, window outside and enjoy more creativity. Even though I've had a great time out on the beach, it's not all over. I then get to work with my images. Yeah, uh, if, if I sent these off, if I'd come home from the beach, dried off, stuck these in the post and a couple of days later these prints had come back how would I have felt well not overly happy I don't think none of them would have made my album um, back in the day I was processing my own transparencies so that made it more affordable and it allowed me the opportunity to be slightly more cavalier with my shutter button that said it was still a relatively expensive pastime and so I think that what I really like about digital photography is that it opens it up to people and gives us much more opportunity to have fun with it and be creative. And there are people that I know right now that enjoy digital photography that in a million years wouldn't have done it if it was still film based. So I think digital is a great thing. Um, I'm going to leave it here for this one. Bit of a letdown, really. I, I won't even keep them, I don't think. Um, although, maybe I'll do a raw file and we'll have a look next time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit rough around the edges because the conditions were difficult out there. But thanks ever so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll be a bit more slick next time. Uh, and if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers. Thank you.